My next guest is coming off an impressive third round TKO victory over John Ramirez at Ohio Combat League 18 on March 5th. It is Josiah Harrell joining me here on the program for the very first time. Josiah, how are you, sir? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing great. Congrats on the win, man. Uh, still undefeated. Uh, what was the what was the game plan going in? And obviously, it felt like you executed it. Uh, yeah, I um, appreciate it. Um, anyways, the game plan was pretty much go in there, um, get them tired, and then uh, finish them. And really, we knew that our ground was a lot better than his. So we would like it to be on the ground, whether he was on top or whether I was on top. It didn't really matter too much. But uh, we knew we wanted to be in the ground, and we wanted to take his striking away from him. We wanted to take that puncher's chance away from him. And then as soon as he got tired, I decided to stand up for a little bit and uh, probably should have stayed standing up towards the end because I think we could have got that, uh, that KO instead of that TKO. Going into a fight like this, uh, you know, are you are you worried about the record, about the undefeated record? I know for some guys, you know, they don't care about the record. They're just like, I'll take it fight to fight. It doesn't matter. And I've talked to other fighters saying, you know, it's a bit more pressure when you have that undefeated record. Yeah, um, I've lost before. I mean, fighting's fighting. I mean, I've lost in wrestling. I've lost in football. Re- lost in, in all different types of sports. The O means absolutely nothing to me. I'm going in there to get better. I'm going there to learn. I'm going there to improve myself. And then if I happen to get a win, that's a bonus. If I uh, happen to lose, all right, we're back on the drawing boards. What do we need to do to get better so then we're not back in this same situation if we were to lose? Anything surprise you about him as an opponent that maybe you weren't expecting? Dude's fucking tough. Sorry about my language. Oh, <laughs> no, swear was... away, man. I want some honesty here. I love it. No, uh, yeah, um, I'm going and I'm elbowing him as corners, talking so much shit. It's so funny. They're like, he got his hands like pillows. He's scared to do this. He's scared to stand up. Whatever it is, I'm just listening to them while I'm hitting him and, or trying to finish him. And uh, he, he was not going away. He was not going to back down from a fight. And I, I, I can't respect anyone more. Um, if, if you're going to go in there, give it your all in and, and do that. And I, I do respect him as a person, let alone as a fighter. Have you had that before in a fight where you can hear the corner talking smack? Cause I, that would annoy me if I'm in the fight and if anything it would probably make me can fight a lot better. Oh, I hear everything. I'm, I'm pretty calm in there. Um, but other than the crowd, I mean, I will, unless they're chanting and yelling, but I, I hear my coaches, uh, and then I'll hear their coaches, um, more than anything. I'm just trying to stay as calm as possible. And and try to be aware of my surroundings. I know you don't get paid by the hour. I'm sure if all you know, if all goes well in a fight, you want to get out of there as, as quickly as possible. But are you happy you kind of got that three round experience to kind of show off a little bit more of, of what you're uh, capable of in the cage? Um, it, it doesn't really matter. I, I remember as a as an AMI, the only thing I wanted was experience, and uh, we I I don't even know how many decisions I went to and probably didn't need to go to, but I mean I just wanted to get as much experience as possible, and then as I'm uh, transferring over to uh, being a professional, I'm like, okay, I need to be safe. I need to make sure I don't get cut. I need to make sure that I can fight again because I want to be active. I want to continue to fight, and uh, as as quick as I can, uh, as quick as I can bounce back is is what I want to do. I want to be able to bounce back and fight again. So now it's more into a um, a mindset of get in there, don't force a finish, don't force anything. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't keep looking, keep the pressure on and, and stick to a game plan, whatever that is. How do you celebrate after a big win like that? Uh, I don't, I, I didn't really celebrate. I went out with, uh, Troy ended up getting, um, helping me out and we end up going to having the people go to a bar. But I mean, other than me wanting to be with the people and, and hang out and have him do that, I, I didn't really celebrate. I gave coach the belt. Cause I mean, that doesn't really mean anything to me. Um, and I, I end up just getting to a point. I've been contacting people. I got. I just want to make sure my mornings are good right now, and I want to make sure that I'm uh, in a headspace where I can get better, progress, and then eventually get to a spot to where I don't have to work two jobs and and I can start uh, celebrating. Because I guess at this point I'm like, okay, because I had to work that Sunday, so I fought Saturday. Oh, really? I yeah, I worked. Uh, I had to be at work at seven. So then I worked. I fought, and then I worked. That's. Uh, within within that and then i worked uh sunday monday um all the way through thursday gotcha okay i mean like you're kind of living like a superman clark kent type life like just back into work like nothing happened man i guess uh no no time off because you got to get those bills paid right uh, for those who don't know what, what do you do for work i'm a fedex driver so it's uh oh cool i got 
little purple thing on, and I think it's fun. You'll get some people that are aggressive, some people are really nice, and and some people that treat you really uh, well, and and some people that just don't really don't really bother you. That's crazy. Do you ever, I mean, I, you probably don't, but I mean, if someone's being aggressive to you, it's like, you know, I'm a fighter here. Like, you know, come on, like be a little nicer because I've worked in customer service. There's some really idiot, uh, really big idiots out there when it comes to uh, that. Like just entitlement, I think is a big thing. Yeah, um, I'm not I'm not that aggressive as a person, but uh, I've had a couple of times where I, I've texted my boss and like, um, I might have to fight someone because <laughs> I, would, I would be parked out in German Village mm. and um which is super tight it's like there's nowhere to go and then i'm delivering something i had like three or four big boxes that were like 50 pounds 60 pounds each but they're like chairs so i'm mm -hmm. over here I'm, I'm like walking them to the porch and then coming back and walking to the porch and there's this suv behind me and the guy gets out and he's like dude what the fuck what are you doing here he's like i was like i was like dude what do you want me to do i'm in the middle of the road where do you want me to go he sees the cars parked down he sees the car parked down he gets out of his car and he's like he's like and then he just freaks out and then turns around and does what he needs to do. But I'm like, you can't get in someone's face and 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 not expect them to want to fight. And I'm like, um, that was that was the second time that someone from German Village that day uh, came at me. And that's after that, I was like, uh, people don't like me over here. We, I might be end up getting in a fight. What do you want me to do? And we end up coming to a conversation with my boss that say. Just don't get in it, which I don't want to get in any uh, physical course, alteration yeah. because anything can happen. Uh, I don't care who you are. You can get stabbed, shot, punched, uh, just that. But no, there's there you'll get different things now and then and, and people will have bad days. And usually that's what I I just, oh, OK, he's probably having a bad day or she's probably not having the best day. Let's just I'll get out of their way or whatever, let them go by or. Just be like, hey, I don't know what you want me to do. I'm trying to do my job here. I'm, I'm going to be out as quick as possible. And then, so. Let me ask you a question as a FedEx driver. I mean, I had an experience with Amazon. I just want to get your take as someone who delivers stuff. I was curious about this. So last summer I had a package delivered and, um, you know, obviously, you know, still during the pandemic, during COVID times, uh, but my cat was sitting outside uh, the door and my cat's like super friendly. Like he's this big, like cat, he's harmless or whatever, but he was sitting like kind of near the door and I got a call from Amazon. I was out, it was actually golfing or something. And the guy's like, Hey man, like your cat's outside. Um, I, I don't know if I should deliver this or not or whatever. I'm like, Oh no, no, the, the cat's harmless. Like, I know there's legal stuff there, but, um, have you ever, have you ever had that before with like a pet where you're kind of worried about delivering something like I could see an aggressive dog, but my cat's like the laziest, dumbest cat. Like if anyone tried to rob us, we'd be screwed. Yeah. At this point, honestly, I'm so used to walking up to dogs. Like if I had a couple dogs nip at me, but they're always super little dogs. And usually if an owner has their dog out, unless it's like an electric fence, which you just got to look for, the dogs are usually fine. Mm -hmm. uh, I've delivered out in Asheville and they, there's this uh, place, I'm not going to name the address, but they, they have uh, just 16, 15 dogs just free running around. 16 the dogs. That's crazy. Six, so I'm, um, when I walk out, I walk out and then I'll walk and then the first alpha will come up to me, smell me, and then he'll kind of like go on his way and I'll let everybody else smell me and I have the package. So I'm like, oh, if they jump me, I can't do anything. And I'm just trying not to flinch or whatever. And uh, I'll have the next uh, alpha, which she's an aggressive one. She's uh, like a white dog. And she's, I mean, afterwards, she's just smart, but she'll go up to you and she'll kind of nudge you. Like she's like trying to bait you or whatever and she'll nudge you and her all the dog's hair will like be spiked up around their spine and, and that's usually what i look for but i let them smell me i let them smell me and eventually they'll they'll either walk away or they'll stay close and then i'll walk slowly and uh just try not to make any crazy movements and then i'll deliver the package and then just try not to obviously turn my back too much but um yeah i just try not to jump or or be frightened i guess because uh last thing i want to do is get jumped by some dogs yeah, and look, I mean, <laughs> fighting in the cage is nothing compared to 16 dogs uh, trying to deliver a package, man. I give you some credit for that. that that's cool. Um, just you mentioned it there. You have two jobs. What, what's the other job you do as well? Well, obviously this. Um, I don't... I. Oh, so you mean fighting and, and the FedEx thing. Okay, I thought I thought you meant you had another job on top of FedEx. With sponsorships and everything, it was like, I get paid for it. It's a job. Nice. This It's it's fine. It's um, I don't. I used to um, help coach. I was mm -hmm. assistant coach at um, Licking Heights. And I kind of had to talk with them and be like, hey, I, I mean, I'm obviously I love you guys. And if 
But as fighting's getting more serious, I'm basically just knuckling down, and it's going to be uh, to a point where all I got to do is train, uh, stay healthy, take care of my body, and then make sure that uh, weight and everything's on point, and then and then fight and go out and perform and inter- entertain. Love it, love it, man. Uh, again, let's talk about fighting because at some point we got to talk about uh, you know your career and everything. Big win, obviously, undefeated still. Like I mentioned, what's next after this? Like I said, uh, that's a that's a record. I'm sure uh, you know Dana White and the Contender Series are kind of looking at. Is that kind of what you're aiming for next, or what, what's the game plan for the rest of the year? Um, rest of the year is going to be staying active. Um, whether I got to sign over and uh, get into a uh, management organization because I don't have a manager. Uh, whether I do want to commit with that and then start traveling and start doing that and and trying to stay as active as possible, that's one thing I'm gonna do is just to stay as active as possible. And two is just to get me uh, closer and closer to a situation to where I don't have to work anymore. Um, do I think I'm ready to go into the UFC and stuff like that? Yes, I do. But do I do I, do I think that I'm ready to compete at the highest level there? I'm not that stupid. I I don't know. So mm-hmm. instead of me being like, yes, for sure, I just I don't know. So uh, I would rather be able to train twice a day, like religiously, and be able to not have to worry about anything but training and and, and myself and and, uh, recovery to a point to where now let's test myself instead of being like, okay, yeah, I work work most of the day and then I get to uh, train once and sometimes twice a day depending on the day. But no, I, I'm my my real goals right now are just to be able to put myself in a position, whether it's through social media, whether it's through um, me going and talking over to management companies or other businesses or partnerships, whatever that has to be. Uh, so I do not have to um, basically work is is the goal. Um, but I would like I wouldn't say like, but it would be dope to go out and perform for for a bigger organization like that, whether it is a Bellator, a UFC, or one, or or whatever it is, like I'm not gonna, um, I'm not, I'm not gonna be picky and choosy about it. It's like, I'm not that, uh, I'm not that ignorant. Okay, well there you go. Uh, again, uh, thanks for the time, man. Uh, really looking forward to what's next. Uh, any management companies out there? Might as well plug your social media at the end here. And if you got any other sponsors or anything like that, I'll give you the last word. All right, uh, my social media is at Instagram. It's gonna be Josiah Harrell at MMA. And then uh, shout out to my sponsors.